Oh, we gotta love this one. The IRS is saying they are now going to increase the rate of their audits in 2024 and beyond. Welcome back to the channel, Rockstars. That's right, news from the IRS yesterday on Friday, May 3rd and Saturday, May 4th is that they are planning to increase their audit rate. They're going to audit more people here in the United States. They told uh, the news, they laid out a plan for who they're going to audit, how much more they're going to audit. If you don't remember, Joe Biden, our president, Joe Biden, issued a funding. It's called the IRA, right? He issued funding to the IRS in the amount, if I remember right, the IRA, which is the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, $80 billion on the IRA. And a bunch of it going to IRS agents to do more audits. Well, they say it's to collect money from the wealthy. Let me lay this out for you guys. I'll probably put a screenshot doo -doo, somewhere in the thing. The IRS, after the pandemic, was not able to respond to taxpayer needs and customer service things. They say that the uh, new money that's the uh, helping them boister the IRS's program is led to the collection of $520 million extra dollars from wealthy taxpayers who didn't pay their taxes. Here's who's going to face an increase in audits starting this year. The IRS plans to triple the audit rates on large corporations with assets of more than $250 million. Audit rates for those companies will rise to 22.6%, where it was only 8.8% .8 in 2019. In the next two years, between now and 2026, they plan to raise that rate almost triple. They're going to triple the amount of audits on large corporations with $250 million. Large partnerships with assets of more than $10 million, so like LLC partnerships, corporation partnerships, they will see an audit increase of tenfold, rising to 1% in the tax year 2026. Uh, they were only at 0.1% in 2019. Wealthy individuals with total positive income of more than $10 million will see their audit uh, rates rise 50%. From uh, to 16.5%, where they were at normally 11% in 2019. So 11% of individuals that make $10 million or more get audited. Now it's going to be 16.5%. There is no new wave of audits coming from the middle and low income individuals, coming from mom and pops, businesses, small businesses, and that's not their plan, Werfel said, who is the spokesperson. Focusing on big corporations, complicated partnerships, and wealthy people who earn over $10 million, the IRS wants to send a signal. It sets an important tone and message for complex filers, high wealth filers, and that's their focus of air, uh, area of focus. The myth of 87,000 armed IRS agents. The agency also outlined its efforts to bolster hiring thanks to the new IRA money. In the mid-1990s, the IRS employed more than 100,000 People, But its workforce had dwindled to 73,000 workers in 2019 due to a wave of retirement and funding cuts. Werfel said the agency has recently boosted its workforce to about 90,000 full-time employees and it plans to expand to 102,000 workers in the next few years. The number won't even be a record high for the IRS. It's well below the numbers from the 1980s and 1990s. He added that the hiring data should dissolve what he called any lingering myths about a supersized IRS after the IRA passed, some Republican lawmakers warned in 2022, I did a video here because it was put out, that the agency would use the money to hire 87,000 new agents. This should put to rest any misconception about us bringing on those 87,000, noting, uh, adding that many of the new hires are replacing retiring employees. So according to this, they had dwindled to 73,000 workers. They revamped up to 90,000, which is an increase in 17,000. And they want to go to 12.5 or to 1025. So that's another increase of 12.5. So that total increase would be about 29, 30,000. So not 87,000, about 30,000. And that would have taken place over the course of about five or six years. So we're about five years in from that. So uh, 87,000, not sure where that number came from. Tons of places reported that's a number. It ends up being a little closer to 30,000 employees, which is still a lot more enforcement. Do I believe, do we believe, hands up in the comments section, leave it uh, down below if you want. Do we believe they're going to target these wealthy individuals with $250 million companies, $10 million partnerships, or $10 million, $10 million individual earnings? Yeah, I do think they're going to target these people, of course, because if you've got an IRS agent who's making $100,000 a year and he's spending all his time collecting it from a bunch of small people who have to pay a few thousand extra or, or cheat it out of 5000 or 10000 in taxes, 
they're no big deal. There's somebody making, you know, a hundred grand a year who didn't pay 10 or 15 or $20,000. That's not really a good use of time. But if that same IRS agent digs into a guy who made $10 million and he cheated the IRS out of 2 million in taxes or 3 million in taxes, well, that could be a big windfall for the IRS. So it makes sense to put their time and effort into money that is bigger numbers. However, however, let me preface this by saying, I don't fully believe them. I believe they're going to put some agents and time and effort into those wealthy individuals. I believe they already know a lot of those people have tax loopholes and tax accountants and tax attorneys and make it really, really hard for them to come after them. Coming after the middle class and lower class is quick, it's easy, and they can just ching, 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 just volume roll over all those people. And we don't have generally the money you know, that a big corporation would have, a $100 million corporation would have to fight off the IRS. People like myself, you know, somebody who does, you know, in the mid high six figures or somebody who's even just doing 100,000 or 150,000 or 80,000, it's much more difficult to fight the IRS. You don't have the means, you know, you might have $50,000 or $100,000, but you don't have the means to hire these high powered attorneys that these other companies would have. So they see you as low hanging fruit. They see you as a little bit easier to go after, a little bit easier to attack. So I believe they're going to do it twofold. I believe they're going to come after those of us with small businesses they think they can get money out of. Um, keep your stuff on the up and up. Keep receipts. I literally have boxes and boxes of physical receipts. I have all my digital receipts for my bank accounts, my credit cards. I download my statements each month for all my debit cards, my bank accounts, my credit cards. They're in a file on my computer so I can bring up, you know, May 2021 at any time, June 2021. The physical receipts are something I'm starting to get less and less on. This box contains receipts uh, with a big folder for the last four to five years. I think I have 2019, 2021, 22, 23. So that would be five years. The IRS can go back seven years and longer if they come up with something. So I know I have five to six years of receipts. If I had to go all the way back to like 2016 or 2017, it'd be a little harder. I have my digital records, so I would be able to come up with what I needed. I'm sure in an audit. I'm not really that worried about an audit. All my stuff's on the up and up. I basically, all month long, every month, I stick receipts, my, my, my physicals, like if I'm at Home Depot buying shelving or bins or whatever, I stick them all in this drawer every month. And then when the month is over, I pull them out, I clip them all together and I put them in a folder and then they go up in another box. And then of course, like I said, I have my monthly statements downloaded on my computer so I can pull those up at any time. An audit would be annoying. It would suck, but I think I would pass it with flying colors. I don't think I'd have any issues. I don't mess. There's one couple people in the world I don't mess with, and uh, one of them is the IRS. Just file your taxes, guys. Pay your bill and move on. Like It's that easy. The stress is not worth it. I've had to file extensions in previous years, and uh, the stress was just annoying. So now I'll just get it over with and get it done. Okay, that's my story. That's Saturday news from the IRS, from taxes, from all the fun stuff we all love not, but I uh, just thought I'd pass that on to everybody. Don't be worried about it. If you need help with your taxes, I'll link CPA, licensed CPA and reseller Mark too. He's got a great website. You can uh, pay for his help. He will get you all set up. If you've already filed an extension, you need help to get ready by October, please check out Mark Two's website. He can also help you all year long with your bookkeeping. If you need a program for your accounting and bookkeeping to use during the entire season, tax season, off season, whatever, my reseller genie is the program to use. Affordable, easy, clean, and the best customer service, best ownership and team you will ever find. I will link them below as well. Please go check them out. Don't get stressed. Don't get overwhelmed by taxes. You can make it happen. It's very easy, a lot easier than you would think. And both of those resources will help you keep it in check. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for joining me on the weekend. Hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm. It really, really, really means a lot for me if you take one minute to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Don't miss future videos. And I'll see everyone next time.